Well, good evening, everyone. Pray that you all are doing well, and it's good to see you uh, this Wednesday night. Thank you for coming out for Wednesday night prayer meeting. Aren't you thankful for Wednesday night prayer meeting? And uh, what a blessing that it is, and uh, appreciate you being here tonight. Appreciate everybody that came uh, Sunday morning, had VBS preview Sunday, and uh, had a wonderful time um, in the Lord. Um, if you want, if you have not signed up to help with VBS yet, um, I believe we have uh, some of the little placards down here that you can get. Uh, fill that out and get that turned in, and then there's also a table um, at the end of the hallway there uh, across from Brother Bruce's old classroom um, that's got more information about Vacation Bible School, so stop by that table as well if you want to sign up. So um, grab a little note card tonight, fill that out, and then stop by that table, and that'll give you all the information that you need. If you have any questions, you can come find a member of the VBS team, come find me, and uh, we'll help you any way that we can. Uh, appreciate everybody that went down uh, to Oak Grove Baptist Church on Sunday night as we had a good time in their revival meeting, and uh, you pray for them as they're finishing up revival tonight. Um, but I want to thank everyone that went. We had a wonderful time in the Lord and a good time of fellowship afterwards. So it was just a wonderful time together. By way of announcements for Saturday, uh, March the 11th, got the benefit for Preacher Warren Elliott out at Cooper's Gap Baptist Church from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Um, so with that, you can get uh, barbecue plates, hot dog plates, and different things um, to help him and his family as he's incurred some medical expenses and uh, we love brother warren and his family and uh, it's, it's an honor to to serve him and to help him in his time of need and i uh, want to thank everybody that gave to the love offering we're going to be taking a check out there um, to them and so thank you for being so generous in your giving and uh, we just continue to pray for brother warren um, as he's recuperating on Sunday, March the 12th, this coming Sunday, of course, it is uh, Daylight Savings Time, uh, spring the clocks forward, and then we're going to have a little fun, going to have March Madness Sunday. Um, everybody wear your favorite college team's colors, and we'll just have a wonderful time together, and uh, then we'll have business conference following the evening service, um, so uh, heed to that, stick around for that. A uh, couple things about the renovation project and different things, how it will affect our services. I know this is a lot to take in, that's why we put a lot in the bulletin, but I'll go over this in the weeks ahead to try to help you. On Sunday, March the 26th, after the morning service, we're going to have a hot dog lunch down in the fellowship hall. But while the hot dogs are being grilled, men, we need to move some of these pews over to one side. We're going to put all the pews here in the main sanctuary over on one side to help uh, get, get ready uh, for this team to come in and to redo the carpet and the pew upholstery. Um, we will take the hymn books out of uh, the pews. We'll get those back in the library that Sunday morning. I I love that y'all have, have things for your kids, grandkids in the pews. You got your personal belongings and everything. Please take those home with you, okay, um, that Sunday. So you can take those out to the pew, take those out of the pews, take them to your car, just so that I, everything's out of them so these folks can do what they need to do. So that's going to be on Sunday the 26th. We'll enjoy a fellowship meal together down the fellowship hall, and then we won't have any evening service on Wednesday the 29th. We will have kids men down in the fellowship hall. We will find a place to have prayer meeting um, here at the church. We may meet outside. Um, you know, we'll find a place. We may go to a classroom. Like I said, we'll find a place to have prayer meeting. And we'll do the very same thing on the 5th of April. So those two Wednesday nights, we'll still have prayer meeting. We'll meet somewhere on the campus of the church, and the kids will have kids men down in the fellowship hall. All right, Sunday, April 2nd. We will have, I'm already praying for good weather, um, we're going to have drive-in church. Okay, we'll have drive-in church um, out here on the lawn, and we'll have a wonderful time together. Um, we'll set out chairs, people can get out of their cars and just enjoy um, some drive-in church. So um, we'll have that. We'll have more information about that. We haven't made a decision as of yet if we're going to go earlier, like 10 o'clock, or if we'll stick to the 11 o'clock hour for that but we'll make a decision on that. There won't be any Sunday school or evening service on that day as well. So carpet company's coming in to get everything done. Uh, Lord willing, be April the 3rd through the 6th. Then on the 7th, we'll have our Good Friday communion service, and we'll be right back in here with everything completed. And so everything will then 
run normally, getting ready for Easter. Okay, so Easter Sunday, we'll have sunrise service at 6.45 a.m. Then we're going to have breakfast to follow. Then we'll have Sunday school at 10, worship at 11, and we won't have any evening service. Now, if you remembered all that, you're doing really, really good, okay? If you didn't, it's all right because it's right here in your bulletin, all right? So make sure you grab one of those um, every single week, heed to that, and we'll do our best to, to announce it as much as we can to try to help you. Uh, we know it's a busy season, um, but the Lord's good, amen? And he, he's doing a lot of stuff, and we praise the Lord for it. And so we can adapt, right? We can, we can adapt, and we can make this work. Um, so... Uh, just be prayerful about that and just heed, heed to those service times and different changes. With Easter coming very, very soon, if you'd like to sing for the special Good Friday service, a song concerning the blood and the cross, um, see myself or Brother Bruce and we'll get you into the order of service. Um, if you would like to give to our Ministry of the Month, um, which is going to be Baptist on Mission uh, for the month of March, Baptist on Mission, they go out um, anytime there's a disaster and there's a need. They go out, they set up their big trucks, and they, they bring water, they bring food, they bring clothes. They do all sorts of things for people that are in need. And so um, we want to give to Baptist on Mission um, this month, so just be prayerful um, as you give to that. Um, for the renovation project, if you'd like to give to that, um, uh, we praise the Lord for all that he is doing around the place. Um, but if you'd like to give to the renovation project to help offset the cost, um, you can just get, put that on your tithing envelope or on the check. Every penny that you give just comes off the final bill on that. And if you'd like to give to Operation Christmas Child for the month of March, they ask that you bring uh, soap and washcloths, and we appreciate everybody giving throughout the year. Uh, being in the back for Easter candy for the Easter egg hunt, you can drop that by um, by March the 18th. And then downstairs, um, by Sunday, March the 26th, all the Easter bags for the Polk County foster kids are due. Um, a lot of folks have already placed their bags downstairs, so if Miss Rhonda puts you on that list, just drop those off there by the 26th, and I know that you'll be blessed for it. Um, I think I think I've about got everything. If I missed anything, uh, just give me an A minus, and uh, we'll. We'll make do, and we'll make sure that we do better next time. But, again, it's so good to see you all tonight. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless our time together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for the opportunity to come to your house tonight to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. God, we thank you for Wednesday night prayer meeting. I know that I need Wednesday night prayer meeting. And if everybody's honest in this place, uh, they didn't come tonight because they had to. They came because they wanted to, because they need Wednesday night prayer meeting. And so, God, we want to thank you for everyone that's made their way out. Would you bless our children um, down in Kids Men tonight? And, God, we just ask that you would just move into this place. God, would you manifest yourself? Would you meet with your people? We don't want to go to church without you. So, God, we pray um, that you would do in this place what only you can do. And, God, we're in need of a touch from you tonight. So, God, we pray that you'd grant it. Would you continue to lead, God and direct? And may everything that's said and done in this place honor and glorify your name and your name alone. First, in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. In your church hymnal, page 235, page 235 in the church, as we stand, he set me free. Aren't you thankful? Give him praise. <clears throat> Once like a bird in prison I dwell, no freedom from my sorrow I felt, but Jesus came and listened to me.
Aren't you thankful? Page 286, 286, the glory land way. Give him praise. <clears throat> continues to play, turn and shake hands all over this building. Fellowship. And all God's people see it. Amen. What a blessing to be in the glory land way. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. All right. Well, if you're okay with an audible tonight, we're going to close the service in prayer. Um, but I'll ask you tonight, if you got your Bibles, would you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11? Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to be in verses 8 through 10 tonight as we continue um, focusing on the topic of faith and uh, looking here at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, we're going to be in verses 8 through 10 tonight. If you found your place and you will and enable, would you stand to reverence the reading of the Word of God? 
The Bible says in Hebrews 11, beginning in verse 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. God, you have blessed us beyond measure. And we just want to say thank you tonight for being who you are. Besides thee, there is no other. God, I'm thankful that you're alive. You hear us. You answer us tonight. We thank you for the songs that have been sung. Thank you for prayers that have been prayed. God, thank you for praise reports that have already been given. And God, we say thank you for your pure, holy, infallible word. As we look to this text tonight, I stand where my flesh fails me. I cannot preach in and of myself. So God, we pray that you'd preach tonight. God, would you use me as a vessel uh, to be preached through. God, I pray everyone under the sound of my voice would see all of you and none of me. May we leave this place tonight saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Continue to lead, guide, and direct. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated tonight. Just by context of Scripture, as we've been going through this chapter now for a few weeks, and Hebrews 11 has been deemed the, the faith chapter or the chapter of faith or the hall of faith. I believe that the writer here under Holy Ghost inspiration is none other than the Apostle Paul. And we find in verse 1 that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance and it is evidence. Uh, it is substance something that we can grasp a hold of, something we can hold on to. And uh, now tonight as we continue to look through this chapter, uh, as we look through what many have deemed the hall of faith, I, I come to remind you just one more time tonight that these people were not perfect people. They were not perfect people, but they were faithful people. Uh, let's recap for just a moment the ones that we've looked through thus far. Why we started in verse 4 and we looked at Abel and the Bible says that he offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh. It was about a more excellent sacrifice that he offered than Cain. Cain just brought the fruits and the vegetables of the ground. He brought the best that he could muster up. But Abel brought what God had required, a blood sacrifice. And God was pleased with Abel's sacrifice. He was not pleased with Cain's sacrifice. And so we find that the way that he obtained witness that he was righteous was not by anything that Abel did, but it was about the sacrifice that he brought. And I just came to remind you on a Wednesday night that we're not counted righteous tonight by anything that we say or do or the good deeds that we do. We're only counted righteous by the sacrifice that was shed for you and I on Calvary's tree, the perfect Lamb of God. Hey, He took our place and He shed His blood for the sins of the world. That was for me. That was for you. That was for the best person you know and the worst person you know. We're counted righteous tonight because of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we looked on at Enoch in verses 5 and 6. What do we know about Enoch? Well, Enoch, he was translated, meaning he didn't see death. But the Bible says that he walked with God and that he pleased God. And we hit on for just a little bit that it's impossible to please God unless you're walking with God. Yeah, some of you get that. It's impossible to please God unless you're walking with God. And I reminded you that we're all walking somewhere. We're all walking with somebody. You're either walking by your own fleshly desires and your own selfish ambition. Are you walking hand in hand with the master? Ask you who's driving tonight? Who's guiding tonight? Whose hand are you in? Are you guiding yourself? Or are you walking by faith and walking with him and being a blessing tonight. By faith in Noah, we took two weeks to look at Noah. Noah before he ever got in the ark, while he was preparing for something that had never happened before. And God told him, he said, the judgment of God is going to come down 
and I want you to prepare an ark. And God gave him the blueprints, and he told him how to build it. And we said, well, he's even the faithful constructor of that ark. Why, he did it just the way God told him to do it. What about faithful in the ark? Oh, there was no steering wheel in that thing. <laughs> hey, but the divine hand of God, the same hand of God that shut the door was the same hand of God that guided that ark as the rains descended and they came up upon the earth. Why Noah and his family and those animals, they were just riding on by faith and letting God drive and letting God steer. And they're saying, we're going to land wherever God wants us to land when all of this is over. Faithful. Tonight we want to look at Abraham. We know that if you go to Romans 4, we find he is deemed Father Abraham. And there was something that happened in Abraham's life, and I like how it's written here in verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go. There was a call that came unto Abraham. Now you say, preacher... Who was the one that called? Well, none other than the Lord. The same God that told Noah to build the ark. The same God that walked with Enoch and had communion with Enoch. The same God that Abel offered the blood sacrifice unto is the same God that called unto Abraham. The call came down with instructions. It came down to call Abraham into action. I came to remind somebody tonight on a Wednesday night that our God is a God who calls. There is a call from the Lord. The first call I got to talk about for just a minute is a call for salvation. There is a call for salvation. How many of you remember the day that you didn't come looking for him, but he came looking for you? Hey, you got up that day. It was just another day. You was just going to come to church to make mom and daddy happy. You were just going to go along to get along. You had other plans, but little did you know that when you walked into the church doors and sat down on the pew that somebody bigger than mom and daddy, somebody bigger than the preacher, somebody bigger than the deacons was going to sit down and do business with you that day and there was a call that came all the way down farther than the stars, the sun and the moon and it came down just for you that day God called out to you and said I offer this free gift of salvation, will you accept it? The call of God Whew, I'm thankful for the day he called and he offered that free gift unto me. And I praise the Lord. I took him up on it. And I've never been the same since. Oh. But I want to say, after that call of salvation, there comes a call of service. A call of service. God called you to do something. Now, I want to say this tonight. I, I'm not going to get on the soapbox. I'm just going to preach it straight. There is a call that comes from the Lord for you to serve him in the capacity in which he desires for you to serve him. I did not come from a bloodline of preachers. I think I may have had a great grandfather or something that was a preacher, but that's about it. I, my father's not a preacher. I don't have uncles that were preachers. I, I've told people this before. If God hadn't called me to do it, I wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't be doing it. But I can tell you this. As sure as a fifth grade boy that the call of God came upon my life for salvation, that very same call. See, I was ignorant the first time at 18 years old. When he came down and he called me to preach and I said, I'd do it. Hey, and then I got into it and I said, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be around Baptist folk. My Baptists are some of the meanest people I've ever met in my life. I'm not going to deal with them people. You can forget it. I'm cashing in the chips. I'm going to the house. You can forget it. I went out there for seven years. The most miserable person you've ever seen in your life. Only for God to come back to me seven years later and make me as miserable 
miserable as I've ever been. I was sitting in the back of a church on a Sunday night. God dealing with me, eating me up. I got up in the middle of a service, went out. We parked across the creek here at Midway. I walked across the bridge, got in the car. And I sat there and I said, God, what do you want me to do? You're making me miserable. If you'll just leave me alone, I'll do whatever you want me to do. He said, I want you to preach. I said, anything but that. Anything but that. God, I don't want to do that. Ain't nobody going to listen to me. He said, I'll take care of that. You just be obedient and do what I called you to do. So from that day forward, that's what we've done. I remember looking at her going down I-26, and I said, this is going to be the craziest thing you've ever heard me say. But years ago, God put a calling upon my life, and I surrendered tonight to preach the gospel. She didn't know what she was getting into, but she looked over at me, and she said, I'll go with you every step of the way. And can I tell you, he sure has been the best God. He's never left me nor forsook me. He's opened up doors that I could have never opened up myself. Hey, I ain't mama called and daddy sent. There was a call that come to my soul years ago. Hey, the same call that came from the throne of God to save me. It's the same call that came to call me into service for the king of kings. He's enough. Mama called. Daddy sent preachers. They ain't got a lick of power on them. Let me tell you something. Hudson McKegg or Cooper McKegg comes to Daddy one day and says, Daddy, I think I'm called to preach. I'm going to tell them, son, if you think you'll enjoy anything else in this life more than preaching the gospel, Go do it. That's what I was told. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And that call of God just wouldn't leave me. He just wouldn't leave me alone. I heard one preacher say one time, any time he gets a young man that comes into his office and says, I think I'm called to preach, he said, you better go check on that. You better go check up on that. He said, because some of them, they get tied up in the emotionalism. I don't know why some of them think they're going to be rich. I have no idea why they think that. I don't know why they think they're going to have it made if they're called to preach. I have no idea why they think that. They think they're never going to have another toe ache or a headache or a belly ache. They think everything's going to be all right in their life. Never think they're going to go through another storm. Never think they're going to go through any strife or any trouble. Oh, how sadly mistaken they are. Them old time preachers say, I'd call them into my office and say, come back talk to me later. He said, you know, some of them wouldn't come back. They wouldn't come back. But they'd be some that'd come back with just tears rolling down their cheeks. Preacher, I've tried. I've tried. I've tried to do something else. I've tried to get my mind off of it, but God just won't leave me alone. He said, about the second time they come to the office, say, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Make sure it's real. Now, I got a call to preach. Some of y'all got a call to teach. God blessed you with opportunity to teach and to love on people. Hey, some down there in the fellowship hall right now, God called them to serve those children. He didn't give me that giftedness. You give me the choice to be with the little ones or the teenagers, I'm picking teenagers every time. I was in youth ministry for six years. I love them teenagers. I'm not blessed to get down there and work with children all the time. I'm just, that's not my giftedness. But aren't you thankful tonight that God reached down and he gave some people some gifts to work with children? Yeah. People that have compassion and love for people. I mean, that can just teach and just open up the Word of God and just make it come to life. Why, you Sunday school teachers, think about the Sunday school teachers you've had throughout your life. Some of y'all have been sitting on church pews for a long time. Think about them VBS workers and those Sunday school teachers who opened up the Word of God and had a giftedness to love on you. And while they may have gave you some goldfish and some apple juice, they were also teaching you the good news of the gospel. And oh, what a blessing it is. There is nothing like serving God in the capacity in which He's called you to serve. There is no substitute. Call of salvation, the call to service. He's calling Abraham. He was called to go. Now there's a call to action. 
If you go over to Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12 tonight, Genesis chapter 12, I'm going to read to you verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. He's not calling him to be passive. He didn't say, Abram, I just want you to sit still. I don't want you to move. He didn't say, I just want you to sit here and think about it for a little bit. He didn't even ask Abram's opinion. He said, get up and go. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. You know what he's doing? He's getting him out of his comfort zone. We as Baptists, we like our comfort zones, don't we? But man, when God, God just has a way of getting us out of our comfort zone. He calls us into action. I can remember coming to be your pastor. And I remember one of the thoughts that was on my mind was I'm taking my wife and my children from the only church they've ever known. All three of my kids were dedicated to the Lord in that place. I preached my first sermon in that place. I did my first baptism in that place. Had my first ministry position in that place. So many firsts that we had. And I looked at them and I thought, how are they going to be? I remember pulling up. We parked out there about where I park now. The Sunday to preach my trial sermon. And I remember Cooper, like out of the mouth of babes, as we pulled in the parking lot. Hadn't even got it in park yet. Cooper goes, Daddy. Yeah, buddy. Is this our new church? I said, I'll let you know in 45 minutes. <laughs> As if God said, it's all right. Everything's going to be all right. They'll go with you. <laughs> Everything's going to be good. Getting you out of your comfort zone. But what does he say? To go into a land that I will show thee. It's not up for you to know, Abram, but I already know. It's not up for you to know, but I already know. you got to put your faith and your trust and your hope in me. I'm going to show you where you're going to go. I'm going to show you where you're going to land. It's just your job to go. Friend, that takes faith to step out and say, God, I, I'm just going to let you be my GPS. I'm going to let you guide me. I'm going to let you show me where I am to go. Abram would learn some things about God. Three things I want to point out tonight. We're going to come pray. Number one, God's a shower. God's a shower. See, he made a promise. He didn't say, I might show thee, or I could show thee. He said, I will show thee. There is a spot where you're going to land. There is a destination where you're going to end up. I have the spot already picked out. I will show it to you. You just go. How many are you thankful tonight? God's a promise keeper. Aren't you glad he's already got a place for you to land? He's already got a place where you're going to be at tomorrow. I'm thankful he's already in our tomorrows. He already knows. He's already got it planned out. Friend, I wouldn't put my faith in anything that this world has to offer when it comes to my tomorrows and for anything to be shown to me. I'd put my faith in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because he is a shower and he is a promise keeper tonight. What else does he say? Verse 2. And I will make of thee. Not only is our God a shower, he's a maker. He's a maker. Now listen. I'm not of the construction team. If you want something tore up and demolished, I'm your man. Hand me a sledgehammer. But if you want something built and you want something made, do not, do not give it to me. That is not my giftedness. It will take forever for me to put something together. I am not mechanically inclined with those power tools and all those things. That is just not 
my giftedness. But I'm thankful tonight that we have a God who's a maker. And what did he promise? He said, I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee. There's one thing that's going to be a common theme when you look through the life of Abraham. God continues to promise, I'm going to make you something. I'm going to make you something. I'm going to make you something. Abraham's reply is, I'm getting older and I don't have a son. How am I going to be a great nation when I don't even have an heir? I don't even have somebody to carry on my family name. How am I going to be something great? How am I going to be made into something? Why, I'm very insignificant. I'm nothing. Friend, can I remind you tonight, as long as we'll keep that mentality that we're nothing and he's everything, he'll make something. The moment that you think that you're something and the moment that you think that you've arrived and you think that you're something great, God will remind you just how small and insignificant you are. <laughs> Faith. It's going to take some faith. Now, is Abraham always going to follow instructions? No. Can I ask a question tonight? Do we always follow instructions? No. No. But our God is a maker. Some of y'all, before you met God, your life was just a mess. Just a mess. I mean, you didn't know heads or tails of what was going to happen in your life. You was trying to turn over a new leaf. You was trying to fix the mess that you were in. You were trying to take care of all the circumstances going around about your life. Hey, but God showed up, and you piled up an altar. And here's what he did. He turned that mess, and he turned it into a testimony. He turned it into a miracle is what he did. Hey, he's still the potter, and we're the clay. He's still a great architect tonight I came to tell somebody in the house of God on a Wednesday night I don't care what you're going through I don't care what the circumstances may look like just remember you're nothing he's everything put it in the hands of the master maker he'll make something out of it he's a maker he's a shower he's a maker somebody needs to say amen verse 3 Verse 2 and 3. He's a blesser. <laughs> He's a blesser. <laughs> he says, hey, going back to verse 2. <laughs> I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee all shall all families of the earth be blessed. <laughs> Somebody say amen tonight that he's been better to us than we deserve. <laughs> All the things that he's done for you. The things that you took for granted. I say he's the best God tonight. Hey, I say he keeps on blessing us. We ought to hey, take recess and shout for 20 minutes on how good God's been to us in spite of us. In spite of our mess ups. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Children's ministry is going to vote me out of here. What do we find? I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. If you read on in, in chapter 12, here's what you find. He continues to travel. And in verse 8, the Bible says, And there he builded an altar unto the Lord. And called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. He built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. You know what an altar is? That's just a place you meet with God. That's what it is. An altar is a place you meet with God. And here's what they'd do. They'd take stones and rocks and they'd compile them things up. And they'd stack them up and make them into something that resembles. That when people would walk by, they'd say, ooh, somebody met with God over there. 
Somebody's been with God over there. Well, let me tell you what Abram does. All of a sudden, a famine hits the land. All right? Now, let's not knock on Abram too bad tonight. Because the famine hits the land, and he sojourns to Egypt. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had some Egyptian wandering years. And if we're all honest, we've all had those. Where it seemed like the grass was greener on the other side. Where it seemed like things weren't just going the way we wanted them to go. Where it seemed like the world had better answers than what God had for us at the moment. Where it seemed like maybe we thought for just a moment, you know, God missed it on this one. I, I need this and I need that and I got to have this and I, I just can't go with Him. I'm going to step out and do things my way. None of us have ever done that, right? I know I have. I'll take my halo off and put it to the side. <laughs> he sojourns to Egypt, comes up with a lie, tells his wife, he says, tell him you're my sister. Come to know that some plagues began to happen <laughs> there in Egypt. And Pharaoh, the mightiest man in the land, most powerful man, he finds out that Oh, Abram and this so-called sister, who happened to be his wife, is the old root of this whole plaguing. He's, can I give you the Polk County notes on it? Pharaoh asked, why'd you lie to me? Why'd you lie to me? He said, i tell you what. Get all your stuff and her and get out of here. Because when you leave, all this junk that's happening to me is going to leave. So he left. Any of y'all ever found out from the world that when things don't exactly go right, they're like, you know what, I don't want to be around you no more. God has a way of bringing you back. <laughs> Letting things fall apart when you sojourn down to Egypt. And all of a sudden the Egyptians are saying, I don't want you here. Go back where you come from. Well, the place where you come from was God's house. So you come back. How many of you, when you wandered in Egypt, you found the same thing that Abram found? Let's look at chapter 13. This will help you today. The Bible says, And Abram, in verse 1, went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning. Between Bethel and Hai. And look what he found. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. You know what happened? He came back from Egypt after they told him, I don't want you here no more. And he got back to the place where he pinched his tent to begin with. And he found that the same God that had met with him there before was sitting there with open arms to meet with him there again. You know what you found when you got back from Egypt? Uh, when you went out there and gave the world a shot? Uh, hey, and everything fell through and you came back with your tail tucked between your legs. Uh, hey, and you came into church and people turned around and looked and said, man, they hadn't been here in a while. I wonder where they've been. And you sat down and God sat down right next to you. And you realized at that moment, I should have never left. I should have just kept going with him. And you came down to a place where you'd met God before and you found out he was going to meet there with you just one more time with arms open wide I'm glad God will meet with us when we're faithful and obedient and he'll still meet with us when we come back just saying God I've made a mess <laughs> and we get back and we say you know what it's just like it was when I left. He's still God. I came to remind somebody tonight. Go back to where you had your tent at the beginning. I'll tell you what you're going to find. You're going to find a thrice holy God. 
with his arms open wide. And this same altar, this same place where you've come many times and you've met with God, you're going to come down here tonight. And you know what God's going to do? He's going to remind you that he'll meet with you in this place one more time. One more time. I heard Dr. Joe Arthur. He said there were some people in his church that used to go to the altar every time. Every time he gave an invitation. And said some people in the church kind of got upset. And they came to him and said, Preacher, does it not bother you that these people come up to the altar every time you preach? I mean, it don't matter if you preach on heaven, hell, tithing, don't matter. They come up there and pray. Seems like every service. Dr. Joe is only Dr. Joe could tell somebody. He looked at him and said, that doesn't bother me a bit. He said, it bothers me, the ones that ain't been to the altar since Moby Dick was a minna. You know what we do when we come to this place? We say, God, I'm just coming to meet with you. One more time. I've met with you here before. I've got help here before. And I'm just coming one more time. Just to meet with you and to be in your presence. And to find some help. You know where Pastor Sean wants the new carpet to be worn out the most? Right there. Wear it out. Wear it out. Because I can promise you this, friend. You'll always, you'll always find God. And you'll always find help. Not out there. Not with what they got to offer. Oh, but you'll find it. Every single time. I've never, I've never bowed down and prayed to him that he didn't answer and meet with me. Never. I've prayed to him when I've been on the mountain. And I've prayed to him when I've been in the valley. And every time, he's met with me. He may have said yes. He may have said no. Or he may have said not right now. But he always answered. He always answered. I'm, I'm here to tell you, friend, I always got up <laughs> knowing I'd been with him. And that carried me on another mile, knowing that I had a place that I could go to to meet with God. So tonight, as we close our service tonight, all willing and able, come on, let's come meet with God just one more time around this altar and go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask his blessing upon uh, these requests and ask him to bless these folks that need a touch uh, one more time and by the way don't forget to praise him while you're down there for how good he's been Whew. yes God sure has been good to us hallelujah glory to God I'm going to ask Brother Gary Haynes to pray for us tonight. Then after he concludes, I'm going to ask Brother John Odell to pray for us. Then anybody else who feels led to pray, you, you talk to God tonight. Just be obedient to the Holy Ghost. You pray. Pray out loud for us. And then after a moment of silence, I'll close us in prayer to end our time together. So, Brother Gary, you lead us, brother. Besides me, there is none of it. There never has been none of it. You are all by yourself. Lord, I just want to praise your holy name and give you glory and honor. God, I want to thank you for the first time that I built an altar down there at New Baptist Church. I thank you that you come to me down there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God, as we that you are a God that blesses. Lord, I look back over my life and the life of this church family. God, I see prayer after prayer that you've answered. Thank you.
praise your holy name. Besides thee, there is none other. And then God, we know that it's all in you. It's not nothing that I do, we do, or anything that's done other than for what you do. We realize that this place has to be filled with your presence. And I pray that you would see the uh, privilege of bringing your presence before us. Dear God, we need your help. We need you more than we ever have before. God, I pray that every time we meet, Sunday morning, Sunday night, I pray that you would flood this place with your presence, dear God. Let the Shekinah glory from on high flood this place where we realize that God is in this place in our midst. God, I pray that you'd have your will and way. You know each request is mentioned, ever burden upon our heart. God, I know that you can answer it according to your will. And I pray that you would, Father. God, I thank you for our preacher that'll preach what you say if you tell him to, Lord. God, I pray that you'd bless him and his family. God, I pray for every family it takes here at Deep Level Baptist Church to make up this congregation. Lord, I pray that you'd bless each family, draw us closer to you. Bless us in Jesus' name that we might draw closer to you and be what you'd have us to be. God, I can't wait for Sunday morning. God, I pray that you'd save somebody. <laughs> make it like a birthday room around here, Father. Lord, they couldn't even drive up and get out of their car without feeling the presence and power of God. Lord, do it for Jesus' sake, that your name will be glorified. Thank you once again for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're wanting to do, going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. We just want to come by one more time. Say thank you for being God alone. <laughs> God, I'm thankful <laughs> that you're alive. You hear us. You answer us. That cannot be said of any of the other little G gods of this world. God, thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace, your forgiveness, your compassion. God, all the attributes that make you up, thank you for being who you are tonight. God, we thank you for meeting with your people. God, help us not to take that for granted. 
Oh, I've been in some cold churches, but I'm thankful this is a warm one. God, would, would you just continue to come by and meet with your people here? Manifest your spirit in this place and change hearts and change lives as only you can. God, we pray for the lost tonight. God, would you save those that are near as hell? God, I pray right now for those that don't know you. God, wherever they're at, I pray you'd go to them. God, put them under Holy Ghost conviction. I pray they wouldn't be able to eat, wouldn't be able to sleep. I pray they wouldn't be able to do anything until they make it right with you. God, would you give them one more chance? I plead for one more chance for every one of them. God, we pray for those that are battling discouragement, depression. I, I saw some discouraged pastors yesterday, hurting men of God. God, I pray you'd lift them up. God, I know there's hurting people in this place, discouraged people, depressed people, people with anxiety, worry, fear. I know they're here. God, those are real things that affect real people. God, we pray that we just cast them at your feet and know that we don't have to carry them anymore. God, we pray for those that need a physical touch tonight. You are the great physician. You can still touch our fleshly bodies and make us whole again. God, we pray for those that are going to be going for tests. God, we pray they'd get good results. We pray for those that are going to be going for surgeries. We pray for success. God, we pray for those that are battling sicknesses. Lord, if you decide to use modern medicine, we, we pray that they'd get under the right care with the right medicine to bring healing to their bodies. God, we thank you for our church. Thank you for this place that we call home. Thank you for the people that make it up. God, we pray that we would be the church. Help us to be your hands and feet because you are the head. God, we just pray. Um, that we would do what you've called us to do. Let us be found faithful when you come or you call us home by the grave. God, help us to be an obedient, faithful people to what you've called us to do. God, would you continue to work in this place? God, would you do something that just makes us stand back in awe and amazement of only you can do it? <laughs> God, we just want to thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. Help us to be a thankful people every single day. Bless each one as they travel home tonight. And God, if you give Sunday to us, we look forward to coming back to your house and worshiping you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's people say it. Amen. You at liberty tonight. Tell somebody you love them before you go.